For me, the definition of extreme makeover is not being able to recognize a piece from start to finish. This little piece is getting an extreme makeover. From the moment I saw it on Facebook Marketplace, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it. First things first, I flip it over on its back and I vacuum all the dust bunnies from underneath. I want to get this piece off the floor and add some legs, so I'm using my hammer to pry the front off. This is easily done with the help of my rubber mallet. I knock off a few of the wooden blocks. Now I need to make the side length match the front length. So I'm measuring four inches up and I'm gonna use my circular saw to cut. I watch Sarah from 445 Designs every week and she is always using her circular saw to level up her pieces and make them gorgeous. So I completely felt inspired by all of her videos. I ran out and I grabbed the circular saw finally. I've always been using a jigsaw, but the circular saw made things so much easier. Then I just sanded down the bottom just to make sure everything was all flush and smooth. The next step is to remove all the hardware so I can clean the piece. I have to vacuum all the cubbies because there's so much dust on this piece. And I don't wanna get it mixed up with my cleaner. I'm using Dixie Belle's White Lightning Cleaner and I like to pour some in a bucket with water. Then I can scrub it down, but if you have dust added, your water's gonna get dark really fast and it's just a mess. And then to remove the old paper lining from the drawers, this is what I used to do. I used to just pull it and pull it and it would take me hours. Then I figured out to use my heat gun and melt some of the glue underneath. It took minutes to get all of the liners off of all the drawers. So that was, that was really great. And then I'm gonna use my magic eraser to get rid of any pencil markings or marker. Now I'm taking it outside to spray shellac the bottom, the back, and the inside of the cubbies. I know I'm gonna have to use a primer, so I'm only shellacking where it's really hard to reach. This is to lock in any odors. Now I'm using some DAPS plastic wood filler to fill in the hardware holes. You want to overfill just a little bit because when the wood filler dries, it sinks a little bit. When it is dry, I go over it with my sanding sponge and I just sand off any excess to make sure that it's flush. And I'm not being real particular about it right now because I know that I'm adding a decoupage paper over. Now I'm going to add a coat of primer with my roller of Bin shellac and that's also to cover the odors. But I also wanna put a light color underneath my decoupage paper. So this just works out perfectly. I did a little test run with my decoupage paper to see where I needed to add my new hardware holes. I don't want my hardware holes covering my paper. I'm using Mint by Michelle's decoupage paper called Angel. It's so beautiful. I love this paper so much. I wanna make sure that her face is on a flat area so I don't mess it up when I'm using my decoupage and I wanna make sure that I line up the angel wings so that it's not in that curve. So I was really focused on that. I grabbed my plastic wrap and this is the tool that's gonna help me apply the decoupage paper. Now I'm using my water mister and I'm just lightly spraying the paper. The paper is pretty firm so this just helps me to lay it on. To apply the decoupage paper, I'm using Dixie Belle's clear coat in satin. I'm going to work in thin rows with my clear coat. I just find that that's what works best for me. Have you ever focused on something so much that you sort of end up sabotaging yourself? <laughs> that's kind of what happens here. 
I did not want to have any wrinkles or anything on her or the angel wings. So I was super hyper-focused on having it perfect. And sometimes I think when you hyper-focus on something, you get the total opposite. And you'll see what I'm talking about soon. I'm using my plastic wrap to apply the decoupage paper. I'm, I have a little bit at the top because I wanted to make sure that I had those angel wings on just right. And I figured I could cut the top off or I could come back and apply the top. I just wanted to make sure she was on nice and good and flat. And if you don't work fast enough, your sealer will dry. So I had the timing thing going on and I don't know, I was kind of stuck in my head here. So I added more sealer and I'm rubbing, rubbing. Of course, I rip the angel wing. Of course. You might be tempted to rub a little harder with your plastic wrap to get the wrinkles out, but don't do that or you will rip the paper. And these papers are not easily ripped. You just don't overwork it. Um, that's what I started doing I, because I just wanted her to be perfect. And then I realized, okay, stop it and move on. Keep going. So that's what I do. And here I'm ready to add another row of clear coat. You want to be sure to not add too much clear coat. Don't add too much water and don't press too hard or you'll get the rips. Um, there is a fine line and if you do get these rips like I do if you keep watching you're gonna see it's easily fixed it's not the end of the world um, because I find it way easier when I add a little bit of the water mister to the paper to move the paper around and to get rid of all the wrinkles It was so hard to not keep fussing over my rip, but I knew I just had to move on and keep going. And here I go again, another rip. Normally this would have completely upset me, but I just wasn't gonna let it. I knew that I could fix this. I could fix this when it's all dry and said and done. So I just keep going. And yep, you betcha another rip. I'm showing you all these rips because I think it's important to know why they're happening and how I'm going to fix them. And it happens, so it's not that big of a deal. Rips can happen because you've added too much sealer and now your paper is soaking. So when you use the plastic wrap, you know, you have to be super gentle or you're going to rip it. Rips can happen also if you're using your water mister and you add too much water. But in this case for me, I was just rubbing way too hard with my plastic wrap trying to get those wrinkles out because the wrinkles drive me crazy. Here we are again, 
<laughs> there's another rip. But honestly, you're going to see, it looks like I'm destroying this, but I'm not. These papers are so forgiving and so awesome that if you're like me, like a bull in a china shop, you can still end up with something beautiful. And here, I had my hand on it and it was wet, so I ripped the, the foot. Oh, and I'm not even gonna look at it. I'm just gonna keep going and just keep going, do my best. And now I'm done, it's all on. I'm just gonna wait for it to dry. Once it's dry, I need to take my razor blade and cut so I can open the drawers. I know that I'm gonna lose a lot of the ends of the paper, which is fine because we're going to use our paint to fill in and build out. I'm giving a light sand just so that I have a nice smooth edge and there's no paper sticking out anywhere. One option for fixing any mistakes is to use any leftover paper you have. You can just decoupage it right over and you really won't be able to tell the difference once it dries. But for me, the easiest way is to paint. With the paint, I can fix any mistakes I have, any rips I have, and I can also build out to anywhere where I don't have the decoupage paper, like in between the drawers or on the sides of the drawers, even to the side of the dresser, or on top and through the bottom. I want to blend these clouds out. So I'm using Dixie Belle's Drop Cloth, Dixie Belle's Antebellum Blue. That's the one I'm using right now. And I'll be using Dixie Belle's In the Navy. So by using a stippling motion and sometimes a swirling motion and these three colors, I'm gonna be able to fix all the mistakes I've made, any rips, and I'm gonna be able to build out the entire picture of her on the clouds and the sky. I just go back and forth with all my brushes and my colors, my three colors, and I'm just adding and overlapping and layering, and I'm using that stippling, pouncing, or dabbing motion, and sometimes I even swirl, um, just until I get the colors that I like, where it looks natural, it looks like it's part of the decoupage paper, and I keep playing with it until it makes sense and it looks right. The one thing I don't do here, which I do normally, is I'm not going back and forth with my brush. I'm not trying to blend this in a really soft, perfect way. So basically the stippling motion is what I do the most. And I only add my water mister just right now because I was kind of struggling mixing the colors together there. That's the only time I used the water mister on this. As long as I was working section by section, the paint was staying wet while I was blending, so there was just no need to add any water to it or it would have been runny. And it would have been blending in that soft, perfect blend where that's not what we're looking for. We're sort of looking for different colors like a cloud would be. And sometimes when you pounce the paint, 
it makes it look a little textured. So there are some points where I see that there's too much of a textured look and then I start swirling it to sort of knock down the texture and that really helps with the look I was going for. I sped up the time on this video because if I didn't, it was going to be over 30 minutes long. But everything's coming up really nice and I'm getting really excited about this piece now. And it does have a lot of meaning. My grandmother asked me if I had a little piece of furniture that she could keep in her house for my aunt who stays with her and my grandfather on occasion and she helps them out. So she needed a place to put her clothes, you know, just so that she could have some stuff there like pajamas and things. My aunt is a really special person and she's very artistic and creative. So I didn't feel like the pressure was on or anything like that, but I wanted to make her something really special because she's actually made me a lot of really creative things in my life that were really special. And she's just one of those people who are constantly helping others. She goes out of her way and she donates her time to help the elderly, you know, to help the sick, to help people who are hungry, to help the, she would box packages for the troops when um, they're overseas. She just does so much for other people and especially my grandparents. She's that person that in a blizzard, she would give you her coat if you were cold. In the last 20 years, she's been battling her own medical issues and she still manages to go above and beyond to help others. So this piece with the angel speaks volumes to me because I feel like she's such an angel for other people, but she also has a guardian angel for her because she has really battled a lot. I think that this decoupage paper is so perfect for um, doing a project for someone like that in anyone's life because even my cousin walked in and she looked at this piece and she said, I don't know why, but it makes me want to cry, but like happy cry. And I thought, oh my gosh, <laughs> well, I don't want to make you cry, but you know, that was kind of great because that's sort of how it made me feel just emotional and but a happy emotional so I just think it's a really special decoupage paper I know that it seems like I'm painting over all the decoupage paper but I'm just going with it I'm blending and having a blast making some clouds and painting these decoupage papers really help to bring out the artistic side of you and you know, and it's not hard because you just kind of follow the pattern that's already there. I'm going to be decoupaging a lot more because it's so satisfying.
here I'm just touching up anything that doesn't look like it's sort of blended and natural. And then all I have to do is fix the bottom of the foot and all of my rips and stuff are completely covered with paint. Everything is blending out. The entire front of the dresser is covered now. To blend the foot, I used Dixie Belle's chocolate and I just used the teeniest, teeniest, tiniest bit. And then on the leg where the drawer um, creases, I just use a little bit of that chocolate and it just blends out super nice. And then um, I still see a little bit of the chocolate, so I added some, just a dot, like the tiniest bit of in the navy just to kind of look like it was a little shadow on the bottom of the foot and it worked out perfectly. So I only used three main colors and then a dot of chocolate and the piece came out like, it looks like it's just one big giant decoupage paper or just one, actually one big giant painting. And here I'm showing you how I took the drawers out and then the unfinished parts, I just touch up in the same exact way. This is probably the easiest part of the entire thing. And I felt like these three colors were really um, on point because you could sort of get with the antebellum and the drop cloth, you could get that lightish greenish yellowish, you know, and then with antebellum and in the Navy, you get another color and then in the navy and drop cloth you get another color so it was just all the colors that were in the decoupage paper we kind of pulled them out with these three colors and i also wanted to show that i pulled the design from the front out to the sides on each side and when we do the full reveal i'll show you how i did the other side And on the top, I used in the navy with my water mister, and I added about four coats because I wanted them to be super, super thin. I wanted my finish on top to be so smooth. I used this little paintbrush, and I only did two coats on the edges just so that I didn't, you know, get globs or anything on the front. And then I sanded in between my coats with a very fine sandpaper. And on my first sanding, I did it kind of rough because um, there were some pieces of hair and stuff in there. So that's why it looked so rough. But my other ones, I was gentle. To seal, I used Varathane's water-based polyurethane. And I will tell you that after you're done sealing over your decoupage paper, it, it makes the decoupage paper a little bit wet. So you might have some more wrinkles in your paper or you might have some bubbling and I definitely had a little bit of bubbling and I will show you what I do to fix that when we're done putting on the legs. I ordered these little feet off of Amazon. They, I think they're perfect for the piece and I'm using my clamp to keep them in place so that I can drill in four screws. I thought I had a ton of bubbling when I was applying my sealer, but when it dried, they went down and I don't. But when I do have bubbles, I do have a few spots that I can touch up. I have these disposable syringes and they have real needles on them. I think 20 comes in a pack and I got them from Amazon. You just fill it with your sealer and you inject your bubble with, you put the needle back on and then inject the bubble. That way you're only putting a needle size hole in your decoupage paper. So right in this crease, it's bubbled up a little bit. I'm just injecting and then putting the sealer in. And once my sealer's in and my needle's out, you can just pat it down with your finger and smooth it out and that bubble will go away. And I found one more bubble that needed injecting. So all in all, I think this piece went pretty good with as far as bubbles and wrinkles go. I do have some wrinkles, but 
they're hardly there and they actually look really great. <laughs> it doesn't look like they don't belong. The wrinkles, they just look like they're part of the art. Just a reminder of what it looked like before. And here's what it looks like today. I love this piece so much. I had so much fun working on it. I had so much fun decoupaging and then painting it. It was just such a fun little journey and it's by far my favorite piece that I've ever painted because it just brought me so much joy. I, I just, I finished this in probably two days because I was having so much fun doing it. I think my aunt is gonna love it and I think my grandma's gonna love having it in her house. If you like this video, check out this video here where I did a mint by Michelle decoupage. I, I did the iron on method and some epoxy resin over it. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and I'll see you next time.